Hello friends, this is Paul. Today I'm going to talk to you about the one way I found to cure myself of narcissism. Yeah, I used to be a piece of crap narcissist, asshole narcissist. I treated people like shit, treated women like shit, thought I was entitled to everything, thought the world just owed me everything. Every minute I sat in existence, I was stewing and just pissed off over how the whole world wasn't mine yet. I think, uh, you know, narcissists would, uh, a favorite line of reasoning would be, you know, if they just put me in charge of X, everything would work great. Now we all say that sometimes, but I'm literally talking about the whole world. If I was just God, everything would be amazing. And I would totally do a great job at it. I wouldn't just give myself everything and murder people and fuck everybody and just ruin the whole world. No, because I'm a really, really great person. They just don't know. If they only knew how amazing I was, they would just, oh, everyone would fall at my feet and my time will come. Oh, this is actually supposed to be a preview, but I'm just going to jump right into the video. So, hey, my name is Paul Graves. I wrote articles years ago, back before I even had a deeper understanding of myself, about self-esteem. Um, my most famous one was Nine Things to Know uh, If You Love a Guy with Low Self-Esteem. It's been read millions of times. Um, I still make videos once in a great while. So, But today, the point is I want to talk to you about, first of all, I've learned a lot in these many years. Life has crushed me, crushed my ego through a process called addiction. Um, I became an alcoholic by the time I was probably 18, 19 years old, and I kept rampaging for about 15 more years while I was in my early 30s that I finally start to wake up. Now, this whole time, even when I first became sober, I still had a lot of narcissistic tendencies. I would say literally NPD before that. Now, getting sober, stopping drinking, it kind of eliminates a lot of those behaviors that bring out the worst in the narcissist, such as the drinking, you know, the alcohol abuse, and then the sex that comes with that, the mistreatment of people, uh, the ignoring of the consequences brings out a lot of the narcissist, you know, a lot of addicts end up becoming narcissists or behave like narcissists, of course, just no regard for other people's feelings, the consequences of their actions. And as a defense mechanism, they, a lot of them like me can develop this haughtiness, this don't give a fuck attitude and walk all over people, take partners for me, women, you know, for heterosexual women, they're taking men as hostages, basically just a tornado roaring through the lives of others. So my point is getting sober forced me to face some of my narcissistic behaviors, you know, but it didn't get rid of them. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So when I first got sober, six months or so into it, I felt, you know, there's a saying, what do you get when you sober up a horse thief, a more talented horse thief? So before I understood the real depths of my own low, low self-esteem and how that translated into narcissism, uh, I, since I felt so like nothing inside, act like I was superior to everyone else. It was sort of a defense mechanism. Um, but my point is I had left my, uh, the mother of my child. Um, I didn't want to deal with it. I thought now I was free to really be the man I was. All those nights I sat on the bar stool and partying, thinking I was supposed to be changing the world. If they could only see how amazing I was, just wait, my day will come. Vainglory. I was sober now and I thought, wow, now I'm really going to unleash the beast. Now I can really just make millions of dollars and get any woman I want and get all the attention I always wanted and get all the validation I needed. And my life turned into an utter shit show. I continued to hurt people. Now, not as bad as when I was addicted and causing destruction with my alcoholism, but I was basically an untreated alcoholic and still a narcissist. I was still feeling entitled, feeling like I deserve the world, walking all over people, taking women as hostages, sleeping with anything I could, just treating the world like crap. Let's jump to, I'm sure you're ready to hear, the one thing that saved me and that changed the whole course of my life. Now, do I still have some narcissistic tendencies? We all do. There's NPD, but really it's a spectrum, right? It's a spectrum. NPD is one end, but a lot of us have some of these tendencies, right? If you have zero, you're actually probably just a very unhappy, miserable, unconfident person. You got to have a little bit of something, a little belief, confidence, once in a while, a little assertiveness, some edge to get you forward in the world, right? You got to reach out, make mistakes, believe you're capable of things. 
Anyways, the only thing that worked for me was 12-step recovery. Now, maybe a lot of you are going to hate hearing that because you think of AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. There's hundreds of 12-step style recovery programs out there. The whole point is that when you get into 12-step recovery, now you may be able to find ways in books. I'm sure there's journals, and I'm going to look into them to do this on your own. It's extremely hard, though. I've, in my experience, it takes other people. It takes a higher power. Now that I call God, but there's many versions of a higher power out there, and all sorts of religions and practices and all parts of the world that could help you reach your idea of what a higher power is. But 12-step recovery forces you to humble yourself like never before. You know, I had to write out every single nasty thing that I've done, every single nasty, yucky, embarrassing thing that I felt about the world, about others, a grudge list, uh, thinking about my childhood and my parents, the way I felt now and then, all the women that I'd hurt, all the harm that I'd caused, all the ridiculous stuff. I had to come face to face with all of that over and over again and confess that to another person over and over again. I had to say prayers nightly. I had to ask my higher power to please, you know, keep me divorced from dishonesty, self-pity, self-seeking, self-will, fear. You know, help me to, I want others to see God through the way I live my life. Now, when you say things like this over and think things like this over and over and over again and confess these nasty thoughts over and over, over hundreds of days and weeks, and I've been practicing sobriety now for about three and a half, four years on this journey. So self-knowledge took me someplace. I mean, I knew when I wanted to stop drinking that I was an asshole, that I'd wrecked lives, um, that I was miserable deep down, that I was getting nowhere in my life. But only through these actions did it cause that change, right? Habits. So once again, what I'm getting at is that 12-step recovery. Now look for 12-step recovery groups. When I made this video, I should have done the research, right? Forgive me, but I just wanted to fire this out before bed because I was inspired. Look for groups maybe that perhaps deal with, maybe perhaps there's Narcissist Anonymous. I really hope there is. I'm going to look after this video and update it in the description <laughs> if there is. Look for programs like this because 12-step recovery, you know, it all started from Alcoholics Anonymous, right? Bill Wilson in the 30s and the 100 groups and the 100 people that started Alcoholics Anonymous changed the freaking universe. I mean, it's amazing what 12-step recovery can do for you, the humility that it brings you. And this is the best part. Once if you're a narcissist, you know, or you're heavy on the MPD spectrum, once you can get some of this humility, once life begins to, and the consequences, once you know what you're doing and you see the consequences of your actions, your ego gets crushed, you get crushed. Once this happens, the party's over. There's a saying in AA, uh, the unhappiest guy in the world is, uh, you know, the, un the unhappiest place to be in the world is a belly full of beer and a brain full of AA. The point is, once you know, once you've experienced this, once you wake up, you're miserable. And you see yourself doing these things. And I've caught myself once in a while. You know, honestly, I'm going through a pretty um, tough, you know, breakup, separation uh, these last four and a half, uh, sorry, God, almost five and a half months. Um, and I've act some, I'm, sometimes I'm tempted to act out in ways that the old me might have done, you know, looking on the dating apps or thinking about taking over the world to get vengeance. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. The jig is up. And that's a crappy place to be, but that's where you want to be, right? Because then you got to figure out, oh, crap, these useless thought exercises, this mental flagellation, this, all these stupid fucked up ways of thinking aren't going to get me anywhere. They never did. I'm doing it again. What do I got to do? I have to do good. I have to do esteemable things. I have to humble myself. I have to just thank my creator for giving me 10 fingers, 10 toes, eyes to see, lips to, t lips to speak, lungs to breathe. All I got is my daily actions, my life. No one owes me anything. No one's coming to save me. And I'm going to suffer consequences from my actions. And today, for example, with this uh, breakup I'm going through, it's the same woman that I had been with when I was still an alcoholic, when I was still pretty heavy narcissism. Um, I mean, I tried my damn best to save this relationship because we have a child together. I really did. And I don't consider myself a narcissist today. I think I'm 
pretty humble, getting more and more so every day. I'm sure I got a lot of work to do still, but, you know, there was consequences for my actions. And I'm sure this person has a lot of resentments and fears and anger built up for me over the years that I acted in those ways. But that's what it is. I can't blame the world for my situation. I have to look at myself first, change what I can, and admit when I've been wrong and admit the part that I play. And everything I'm saying to you right now, and it's not a fucking act, is the exact opposite of a pure NPD, of narcissism. So the way I got here, the way you or your loved one can get here, honestly, the only way I have found is heavy 12-step recovery. Now, maybe you can find that also in religion and spirituality because it does have similar tenets, right? The whole point is heavy, the heaviest dose of humility you can give, you can get. That's how you get out of the narcissism hellhole. Um, and I've heard actually doctors, Dr. Romani, you know, YouTube, I've heard her say that as well. That only thing she's seen is like 12 step recovery programs that can help someone deal with narcissism. So that's my experience, guys. That's all I got for you. That's how you get out of the pit. That's how you get off the fucking merry go round of narcissism and stop screwing up your life. Are you going to be or is your loved one going to be amazingly happier all the time? No. Honestly, sometimes life sucks for me. Now, granted, I make a pretty good living. I got a nice house here. I don't sleep in an unfinished basement anymore. Uh, I don't wake up in a bed soaked with piss, either mine or my toxic par some toxic partners. No, I, I don't do that anymore. But the whole point of getting off this merry ground is to live in the real world, real life. I don't live in fantasy land anymore. I don't live in candy land anymore. I'm not just waiting for some magical prize to fall from the sky. It's not always a happier life, but I don't hurt people anymore. I don't hurt people anymore. I admit my mistakes. I know exactly what I'm doing. And if someone doesn't like me, fuck it. I don't give a shit anymore. I know I'm a good person and I know I'm trying to be a better person every single day. Um, another thing, you know, narcissism can be very attractive to some people. I'm just going to tell you outright. I used to pull a lot of women and get a lot of male admirers. I mean, just, you know, guys thinking I was awesome and women thinking I was awesome, some kind of prize to get and mysterious and this, this weird mystical human being. He's so, it's all fucking bullshit though. And honestly, those aren't the kind of people you want in your life. Do I catch myself once in a great while missing that adoration, that validation sometimes? Sure. But then, like I said, the jig is up. I know, oh God, there I am doing it again. That's all fake. It's fake. It's fake. It's fake. Do I have less sex today than I did back then? Yes. Do I have less drama today than I did back then? Yes. Do I have to deal with life on life's terms and real problems today and not avoid them? Yes. And that's not always easy, but this is real life. So I'm in a place in my life where I'm actually pretty damn depressed. I'm going through some really difficult shit, but I'm not out there trying to find a new hostage. I'm not out there boozing. I'm not out there just gesticulating and gyrating in different places. I'm suffering honorably and rebuilding my life. And this is what I want for you or your loved one. You know, I don't want you to run. I don't want you to go out and take a hostage. I don't want you to think the world owes you something and that you're going to show them and become a billionaire and date Russian models and have yachts. It's Listen, you, you, you can do that someday, sure, but you're not going to get it by dreaming of it, waiting for it, wishing for it. You know, the only way you're going to get things, get a good life like that is through daily actions and humility and gratitude, which you're going to learn through 12-step recovery and getting spiritual, man, and praying to change and being grateful for what you do got right now. So anyhow, that's all I got for you. I rambled on here. This is Paul. Once again, to close off, the only thing I found to cure or seriously reduce narcissism is 12-step uh, programs. So maybe there's one for narcissism out there. I'm going to look and put in the comments here the closest I can find after I edit this video. Have an amazing night. And please subscribe. If you like what I said, please do subscribe. I'm trying to get over 1,000 subscribers so I can monetize, and it'll really encourage me to put more videos out if I know I can at least make 
I, I'm just trying to make like 150, 100 bucks a month. I mean, it'd just be nice, right? Just a little bit of revenue for me. But if you wouldn't mind, subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with more videos about narcissism, low self-esteem, relationships, um, breakups, men's issues uh, that we deal with today. So thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.